Hello, Jacko! In this video, I'll show you how to give a depth perception to the camera that is moving. Well, we'll make it look like the text and images are moving and they come into focus and out of focus. And you can do this with text, images, and video. Now, let's get digital. So, for this example, I will make a new fusion composition in the media pool. So, right click, new fusion composition. You can change the duration of it if you want. So let's go with maybe 20 seconds. Make it, put it onto a timeline, select it and go into the Fusion page. Now in the media pool, I have some images. I'll use two images for now. You can add more and you can also add a video clip if you want. And then you can also use a plain text. You don't need a 3D text, but you could also use it if you wanted to. So I have the media, image, image, and this will be a plain text. Type something in. Now what we want to do is to have a camera move from point A to point B and any media element that comes close to the proximity of it, we want the element to focus in and then be out of focus if it's too close or too far. To achieve that, we need to go into 3D space. Now all of these elements are 2D and to convert them to 3D, the easiest way to do that is to use an image plane. So we can use three image planes. So displayed on the left looks like this, displayed this on the left, it looks like this. So this is now in the 3D space. And now the second thing that we need is the 3D camera. So position it and we'll connect it using a 3D merge node. So for now I will just connect two images. So we have two images on top of each other and if I connect the camera we have everything on top of each other. Now to see this then in the media out we'll have to use a 3D render node. And as you can see, we currently don't see anything, even though we have two images connected. And that is because the camera is on the same plane as the two images. If I move the camera back, I can see the images, but they are a bit wonky. And that is because the two images are in the same space. You need to have a bit of an offset to fix this issue. So you can select an image plane, go to the transform and simply adjust the Z translation to position the image forward or back to get rid of this issue. Now the first thing that I'll do is I'll simply go to the camera, transform and double click on the Z axis in the translation and this will be the default position. Now what I suggest to do is that you put in all of the media that you will use, connect them via the image planes and simply position the image planes where you want them to be. So I'll position this one back and this image plane will go behind it, but I can also adjust the X axis a bit and I can also rotate it to make it stand out just a little bit more. I can do the same with this one. Now when the camera will move, it will just use this axis like so but at the moment as you can see everything is in focus so to fix that we need to blur it out somehow how we can do that easily well we have to enable a few options the first one is in the render node you have to change the render type to hardware go to accumulation effects enable them and we have the depth of field. By default, these values are a bit too high and the PC will get slow, especially when you have the animation applied to the camera and even if you want to move it, as you can see, the camera is just lagging behind. So what I suggest you do is you drop this number down to maybe five and also adjust the amount of depth of field blur to maybe 0 0.02. 
this looks a lot better and we can all actually use the camera to get a nicer preview. But we can always change these two values when we do the actual render. Now the issue that I have is that the depth of field is applied to both images at the same time. What I want is for this image to be in focus while this one is still out of focus. At least when the camera is moving closer to one image or the other. So at this point, maybe this one is okay that it's going out of focus, but this one should be in focus. How we'll achieve that is going to the camera, go to controls, control visibility, and enable focal plane. This will just allow you to see where the focal plane actually is. And you can go to the focal plane and adjust how close or far from the camera it actually is. Now, if I position it closer and when this rectangle intersects with the object that I want, in this case, the image, the image will be in focus. As you can see, this one is getting in focus and this one is still out of focus. Now, what should the value be? This will all depend on how you position the images. In this case, maybe two is okay, but I would also have to position the camera back if I wanted this to be the starting position. Now, the issue that we'll have if we don't change anything else, is that if we have a lot more objects, let me introduce the text, position it way back, we can still see the text. Maybe you don't want to see the text and this image as well, and you just want to see one element at a time. Maybe two at max or at three, depending on how close you position them. Let me just increase the size of the text now, if you use the text node, as you can see, it's not the best idea to just increase the size in the text node, go to the image plane and increase the size in this way. So now the easiest way to fix this, so we don't see all of the elements at the same time, is to go to the camera 3D node and disable this option, Adaptive Near Fur Clip. I'll disable it, nothing changes at the moment, but if I zoom out and adjust this fur clip position, you'll see that it starts moving closer. So this actually affects what we see. We could also affect the near clip So the near clip affects how near we have to be to an object to see it, and the far, how far away we have to be from it to also see it. So now, if I move this back, you will see that the plain text will disappear once this rectangle goes over it. So it disappears and it will be the same with the two images. But when it comes to the images, they don't disappear at once, because they're at an angle, so where the rectangle intersects, the camera stops seeing it. So this is how that can look like. So let's say that this will be my starting position. I will keyframe the z-axis on the camera, and I'm at the beginning. And then maybe the clip will end at this point and I will simply move the camera until I don't see the text anymore. So sound like that. So I have the base animation. Now I just have to fix what I actually see. And to do that, I'll simply go to the starting position and adjust the fur value. Use control to get a precise adjustment. If you just click and drag 
this adjustment is not precise as you can see so maybe something like this and if you take a look you can also animate this so when you have the animation applied to the camera go over the sections because maybe just maybe you want to make adjustment on how fast this should disappear either that or you could also adjust the far position of the camera so maybe when I come to this point I still don't want to see the text so what I can do is keyframe the far clip of the camera at this position go forward and when the camera comes to somewhere like here this clip this text will be visible so maybe something like so because I want the text to appear after this image disappears so let's see how that can look like so it's not the best I hope you get my point we can still fix that issue so what we can do is also animate the near clip so I can also animate or keyframe this value and let's just see what the near value would have to be for the first image to disappear so let's say one that looks okay what I can do is simply position the text down just like so and maybe scale it down a bit Now this is how you can make a simple animation that is out of focus, gets in focus and then also leaves and goes out of focus. If you wanted, you could keyframe the value where an object is in focus. You would do that in the camera, so maybe we'll go to the transform, keyframe the value, go to the spline, so select the Z offset zoom to fit I'll press S at least I should have and now what this will do is that it will hold the focused position a bit longer and not just move out then we can do the same with this image Maybe what I'll do is I'll right click, disable the high quality and motion blur so I actually get a real life preview. And I can also pause it at this point, so keyframe the value again. Select this point and do it like so. Now I just use one point, you could also pause the clip by using multiple points or two points at least so you could also use this value copy it move forward paste the value in so now this will basically hold at least it should you have to then adjust the handle I didn't do the best job with the handle so let's see F for flat so now it holds so that's how you could pause the animation if you wanted to now what you can add to add some spice to this is a background I've used a simple one just a fast noise node connect it like so select the merge make sure that the fast noise is connected to the yellow input meaning that this will be the background in the fast noise you will go to the color simply change this to what you want and also increase the alpha of this one and now you have some random background if you want it to be animated go to the noise and adjust the sieve rate and you also can enable list options if you want 
a different look. And lastly, what we can do is after the render, we don't want to apply this to the background, is use some shadow. So shift space, type in shadow. Now this is positioned to the top. I'll simply position this point to maybe here. What this point is, is the light position. If I adjust the light distance, you can see what this affects. So the light position affects where the light is coming from and how the shadow will affect the different elements. You can adjust the softness, the color of it, and also lower the alpha if you don't want the shadow to be too strong. Does the shadow also affect the text? Yes, it does. Now, if you don't want to have a mess when you go back into the edit page, this is a mess. Simply go back into the render node, increase the quality. Default value is 32. It looks a lot nicer. And you can also increase the amount of depth of field blur. But if you do, you get a mess, as you can see. So maybe you actually want a low value, maybe just 0 0.01. Now, can you do anything with the elements when the camera is passing through and you want the element behind it to be visible? Now, the easiest way how you can hide an element, if you don't want to just cut it off using the near clip like I have done here, is to select the node. In this case, this is the image plane, 3D1 for this one. You would go to the material. And in this case, you would animate the opacity. So I can animate the opacity going from 1 to 0 at this point. So the near clip doesn't actually affect it. And I can do the same with this image. So it's hidden at this point. So opacity is zero and this would be opacity one. Going to the edit page, see how it looks like. Now we could do the same animation at the beginning. So we don't use the near or fur clip to animate the elements in. We would just use the opacity to blend them in, just as we've done with hiding them. Now for a smooth playback, I can also lower the timeline prox resolution. So hopefully this will play a lot better. If the winch resolve doesn't crash, that is. So this preview will now look like poop, but at least it plays quickly. I just don't know what happened with the animation at this point. I would have to fix that. And that's how you can add some depth of field to your text, images, and video clips. Did you find the video helpful? If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more DaVinci Resolve content, and until next time, Jackal, keep it digital.